In this video, I'm going to go over all the settings related to your quiz in Adobe Captivate and where you can find them. Some of the comments and questions on my YouTube channel lately have been about quiz settings and uh, the difficulty that people are having finding them. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to go through all the settings related to your quiz, and obviously that relates to your learning management system as well, and where you can find them. Because of course, in Adobe Captivate, there are settings for the individual question slides, there's settings for your quiz results slide, and there's settings within the preferences of Adobe Captivate. So we're gonna go over all that today so you know how to exactly set up your quiz the way you need it to for your learning management system. Let's get started. Before adding any questions to your project, there are a few things you may wish to do. I have a newly created project with no slides added. The first place where settings for your quiz are located is in the Preferences window. On a Mac, you can access Preferences from the Adobe Captivate drop-down menu. On a PC, you can access Preferences from the Edit drop-down menu. There are three categories of Preferences, the third being Quizzing. Clicking on Quizzing reveals the subcategories. Under General, you can optionally give your quiz a name. I've never found a need for this, but the option is there. Next is the Mandate, where you can select if the user can skip the quiz, must take the quiz, must pass the quiz, or must answer every question to continue to slides that are after the results slide. I most often leave my quiz as user can skip the quiz. An objective ID is a unique identifier that can be used to identify which questions belong to which quiz when you have multiple quizzes in a single course. I've never found a need for this, but a quiz is always identified with an objective ID if you discover you need this option. Every reportable item, either in a quiz or perhaps a custom interaction that you have, has an interaction ID. If you want to set a prefix to all interaction IDs, you can do so here. I've never had a need to use this feature, but it is there if you need it. Showing the score at the end of your quiz will display the standard results slide. If you have questions or custom scored interactions, this will show the results slide. If you unselect this option, the results slide will be hidden from display. You can allow users to review their quiz once they've attempted it. The messages that can be displayed to the user are an incomplete message, a correct message, and an incorrect message. Clicking on Edit Message will allow you to customize the message for each of these three options. Selecting Show Correct Answers can simply tell your learners what the correct answer is for each of these reviewed questions. I personally discourage my clients from using this option because I feel it defeats the purpose of having a final quiz. Selecting Review Mode Navigation buttons will make it easier for your learners to navigate through the question slides when in Review Mode. There are several options that can be applied to all questions currently in your quiz. Shuffle Answers will turn on the feature for all questions that have this capability, namely multiple choice questions and Clear, Submit All, Back, and Skip buttons can be added to all questions using these options here. Showing Progress will display question 1 of 10, 2 of 10, and so on. Changing the option from Relative to Absolute will just display the question number without the total number of questions. Deselecting Backward Movement will prevent your learners from moving back in the course. You may wish to use this to prevent learners from going back and simply finding the answers to questions. The next subcategory is for reporting. With this option turned off, your project can still be published, but the project will only function as a web page. The results of custom interactions or quiz questions will not be reported to your LMS, and most LMS will not accept a published project without some type of reporting enabled. There are four reporting standards available in Adobe Captivate. SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004, AICC, and XAPI. 
SCORM stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. AIC stands for the Aviation Industry Computer-Based Training Committee. And XAPI stands for Experience Application Programming Interface. You can either reach out to your LMS vendor to know which option you should use, or perhaps your LMS administrator who might already know the answer to this question. Each reporting standard has slightly different options, but they all accomplish much of the same things. Let's use SCORM 2004 for our purposes today. Clicking on Configure will allow you to enter information that your LMS will use to identify your e-learning module. In the case of SCORM 2004, there are many fields you can pre-populate that your LMS will use. I recommend that you at least enter the course title as this is often visible to your learners. Work with your LMS administrator to find out what other fields they would like you to fill out. Click the Back option to return to the Reporting subcategory. Now you'll configure the criteria related to how your learner's attempt is represented in the LMS. The first is Completion, or what must your learner do for this instance of the e-learning module to be considered complete. Most often this is viewing a certain number or percentage of slides in the course. Be mindful of any optional slides that may not get visited by all users. For example, if you have a glossary slide or a help slide that not all users will visit, be sure to exclude these slides from the number or percentage of slides required. The second criteria is for success, or what does your learner need to do in order for their instance of an e-learning module to be considered successful? Most often, this is simply passing the quiz. Learning management systems can report how your learners interacted with the e-learning module. Each question slide or custom scored interaction has a unique interaction ID that you learned about already when I shared the interaction ID prefix option in the general subcategory. Selecting interaction data will ensure that each interaction is shared with the LMS. This can be useful if you're troubleshooting your question slide. For example, if nearly everyone is missing question six, an interaction report will show you what everyone answers for this question. If everyone gets the same wrong answer, perhaps you need to rewrite the question to make more sense. Or perhaps you need to redo the slides where the related knowledge or skills are being taught. Some LMS require an LMS initialization text. This field is disabled from editing and you'll not need to worry about this field. The last three options in this subcategory are to send data on every slide, useful if you want to spread the sending of data over the span of the entire course instead of all at once. If you have network connectivity issues, you can experiment with selecting this option or not. Never send resume data will turn the bookmarking feature off for your learners. With this option selected, learners who exit the course early will need to start from the beginning each time they launch the course. Set exit to normal after completion will allow your learners to relaunch the course from the beginning if they have successfully completed the course. Without this option selected, they would return to the final slide in the course. You might want to select this option if this course was a compliance course that learners needed to retake in order to be recertified. Let's move on to the default labels, the final subcategory in the quizzing preferences. Here is where you can customize the default messages, buttons, and progress indicators used throughout an Adobe Captivate eLearning quiz. You might want to customize these messages because your eLearning will be in another language other than your Captivate installation, or you simply might want the messages and buttons to say something unique for your organization. Keep in mind that when you tell your learners to click anywhere or press Y to continue, the reason for this is that not all learners use a mouse. Giving learners a keyboard shortcut is a requirement for accessibility standards. Click on OK to lock in your quiz preferences. Now I'm going to switch to a partially completed project for the remainder of the quiz settings. Let's select the example question slide in the slide navigator. 
Click on the Visual Properties icon in the Properties Inspector if it's not already selected. There are five different question types that you might use in your quiz. For the purposes of this video, we'll look at multiple choice since it shares the most parameters with other question slides and is the most common question type. Each question can either be a graded question or a knowledge check. Simply put, graded questions have a score and knowledge check questions do not. Knowledge check questions are used for practice purposes. I like to use knowledge checks after each chunk of presentation in a course. It's an easy way to add engagement and interactivity to your project. If you open the question properties, you'll see the properties that relate to the question on this slide. You can convert a multiple choice single answer question to require more answers by selecting multiple answers. Use this instead of all of the above type questions as this will make it less obvious as to what the correct combination of answers is. You can select the number of answers from the Answer Options drop-down. The icon next to this is the Shuffle Answers option so that the order of the answers is changed for each instance of the quiz. You can customize the number of attempts, the points for correct answers, and even apply a penalty for wrong answers. You can also set a time limit for this question in number of seconds. Please consider penalties and time limits carefully as these options can be controversial. I would not use these options unless penalties and time limits existed for learners when they're back on their job. Selecting the correct answer is done with the Select or Edit Answer button. Hovering over this button will display the currently selected correct answer. Clicking on this button will allow you to select a new correct answer or combination of answers. With question slides, it's important to note that there are two sets of components that can be customized. The first is in quiz mode and the second is in review mode. Quiz mode allows you to customize the caption for feedback by clicking on show. You can select if the caption is at the top, the middle, or the bottom, and you can edit the appearance of the captions for each state, such as correct, incorrect, and so on. The second set of components are for review mode. When you allow your learner to review the quiz, navigation works a little bit differently. Select review mode to select a view answer button, a next button, and a back button. You can turn these components on or off. If you don't plan on allowing learners to review the quiz, you don't need to spend any time on this section as your learners will never see these options. Let's scroll down to the reporting section. Here is where you can include a question as part of your quiz. This should be selected by default and here is where you'll find the interaction ID for this one question. You can edit the interaction ID if you wish and make it something more meaningful. Let's click on the interaction icon in the properties inspector and look at these settings. Here is where you can set the action associated with successfully answering this question or not. Last attempt is answering the question wrong or simply running out of tries. The reason you might want to have different actions from a question slide are many, but the most often used option is to offer remediation. For example, if the learner gets the answer to a question incorrect, you may wish to send them back to the slide where they should have learned this knowledge or skill in the first place. We call this remediation. I address remediation in a separate video if you'd like to learn more about this. Let's select the results slide from the slide navigator. You can display or hide any of the data points on this slide in the components section of the properties inspector. You'll notice that you cannot disable the review area, however you can show the review messages. Clicking on Show will display the caption for success. You can select the position of the review area from top, middle, or bottom, and then clicking the Review Message will allow you to select the pass or fail state for this message. You can then edit the text and appearance for the messages for each of these states if you like. Click on the Interaction icon in the Properties Inspector. Here is where you can set the pass criteria for your quiz. The default is 80%.
you can select percentage or point scored and then input a value with the slider or field below. You can also select the action for your continue button on this slide under the on pass and on failed tabs. You can input the number of attempts you wish to allow your learner. If you select a number greater than one or select allow unlimited attempts, you can add a retake quiz button to the result slide. This concludes every option to set a preference for your quiz in the all new Adobe Captivate. You're now fully equipped to design and develop quizzes in Adobe Captivate. I hope you found this review useful in identifying where all your quiz settings are located. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see other videos about e-learning and Adobe Captivate. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.